Welcome back to the farm. Here's another day in paradise. Uh, I think it's going to get set to be quite hot today. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to spend the day welding in the sun. Because <laughs> we're like that. That's how we roll. Uh, yesterday, I finished off getting the engine all bolted up on the flower mower. Um, ran it up. I got all the battery connected. Uh, now we need to weld it up and bits and pieces. So I'm going to trundle off with the digger, go down and pick the MIG welder up, which is down the, the other side of the house. Uh, I've got to fix the MIG welder before I can use it. So uh, I'll just this this vlog's just going to be little snippets of bits and pieces we do during the day. I'm not going to film anything full on, but uh, just show you what we get up to. There's no breeze today, so it would be an ideal day to get the greenhouse done. But <laughs> we've got the flower mower to get sorted out, and then uh, I can get cutting grass then. We will get this greenhouse done. In the meantime, we've got the polytunnel. I'll show you in there in a bit, because the chilies are doing superb. Plus the celery, peppers, jalapenos. Excellent. But uh, yeah, so we're going to crack on. We'll go and get the welder and see if I can get that fixed. Well, that's been an eventful day. Got the flower mat all welded up. Got a new drawbar on it. Got the engine lined up properly. Belts are a little bit tight, but they'll stretch. <laughs> and I didn't do any footage, so I've about had it for today. Uh, I say we've got it all done, hooked onto the tractor. I've done a few laps of the field, done a bit of cutting down there, but uh, got some more alterations to do. Surprise. Just we're going to take the wheels off it and let it run on the roller because on the tractor, because the tractor's draw hitch is um, lower than the Range Rover, that it the angle's not so bad. So that I'm just going to run it on the roller on the back. We we'll take the wheels off because they're just getting away. Uh, and then we can um, open the flap up and bolt the flap open because I'm going to, tomorrow I'll come out, I'll, I'll video a little bit tomorrow. Um, I'll come out, open the flap and we'll go and do some of the long grass and uh, see how it copes with that. Whew. But it has been Scotchio today. Whew. And I think I should probably sleep well tonight. Day two, don't know if you can hear me. We've got the engine running, I've reconnected the battery, but the battery's gone flat because uh, it wasn't connected, it wasn't charging yesterday. So today I'm going to take the back wheels off, do a bit of welding on the front, get it on the tractor, get it levelled up, and then we'll weld up the adjustable drawbar because it keeps unwinding. We're just going to, we're only ever going to tie it with the tractor, so we'll just weld it so it's fixed, and all will be good. So, we'll see you down here. You might be able to hear me now, switch the engine off. Because <laughs> it was... I tried the mower out the other day and I got a bit too close to the side and a branch caught hold of the bloody earth wire and ripped the earth wire clean off the engine. So the battery wasn't charging. Um, it had been used to start it a few times, so... Uh, we'll pull start it, it's easy to pull start and then hopefully it will charge that battery up as we're using it. Well, I'm going to take these wheels off and then I'll open the flap up and we'll bolt the flap in the open position and then we'll get welding. So let's check out down here. Oh, here comes the rain. put the bolts back in where they've, where they've come out and we won't lose them then. Yeah. Alright, 
So that's off. Slide that wheel off there now. Uh, thread that back on. That can stay on there then. That thing's held in with a circlip, but I can't get the circlip off until we put the uh, flap in the upright position. I don't know if you can see the state of that dog. <laughs> She's covered in grass seeds. She's been through the long grass. <laughs> so that's unbolted. I've got to be careful with my derriere today. Now I'm double nutting these because they're not nylock and I don't want them to come loose and I've not got any spring washers this size. So, we're going to double nut them. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, Jesus. That's got wedged in there. Oh, gee whiz. Baby, please, tap into the island of the cool breeze. That on the, that in the do up position. And while we're here, see if I can see this. Uh, I need to swap my circlip pliers around the other way. I've got some nice tasty circlip pliers, which you'll probably see on the Ben's Garage video at some point, that these ones are ideal because they just fit in. And then we have a circlip, and then that should now slide straight out of there. We don't need that bit. So I'll go and do exactly the same on the other side and uh, get that bolted. Uh, and the reason this has got an open, openable flap, um, when you're getting into the really long grass and there's nowhere for it to go, it will just bind up the mower. So with this, like this, um, we can tackle the long grass in the field. It will just come flying out the back. It won't chop it up like it did over there the other day, which I'll show you when we're going around on the tractor or afterwards. Um, it, it cut it quite fine and it mulched it up at the same time. We can't really do that with the long grass. This isn't powerful enough. Um, you know, if, it, if we had a big 150 horsepower tractor and the flower mower was driven off the PTO, no problem. We'd be able to go through that, you know, all day long. But we're only 13 horsepower. There, it's got limitations, basically. So all the help we can give it, open the flap up, most of the debris can come out the back once it's chopped it and once it's all down on the floor uh, and we feel like we need to we can go we can close the flap and go over it again and it will just chop it all up and that's all green manure going back into the ground so i'll do the other side and uh, then we'll get on with some welding we're on the front now i welded in a little tongue welded up this box section it had like a tow hitch on it so it could fit on a ball socket uh, you know a ball hitch that was all naff and the, the tractor although we've got an a-frame with a ball hitch on it the link arms kept going from side to side and the back tires kept catching the, the arms and flicking it up so it has got a drawbar hitch on the back which is what I'm planning on doing with this you'll just see down here but it's only quite thin steel well it's this stuff it's quite thick 
Um, it did the job yesterday, but it just started bending. So what I'm gonna do is just grind this up a little bit, put that sideways on, up through the middle, and uh, we'll weld it on. So you've got like the flat on the bottom and the angle like that, so it's like a T, and that'll strengthen it right up, hopefully. But uh, I've just got to grind this up now to um, to fit in the in the hole up here. I've not got to take a lot off it, so I shall just get on that now. So what I'm about to show you, it will look a bit Heath Robinson, um, and that's because it is. We're very limited with tools at the moment. Once the garage is done, here we go again, once that garage is done, I'll have all my tools out, the drill press, the, the metal cutting bandsaw, um, hopefully get the MIG welder up and running, because at the minute I'm using a, an old Machine Mart stick welder, which although it does the job, I mean it welded the grapple bucket, grapple arm thing onto the digger, and it's not falling off. <laughs> uh, Stick welding's all right, it does the job. But I'll show you what I've got planned. I've got the drawbar. It's not gonna last forever because it's only thin, soft metal. Um, but so when we've got the garage done, and I can uh, do something a bit more substantial, and maybe put like a, a leg on it that we can wind up and down, because once I fix this into place, you're just lifting a dead weight, trying to get it onto the tractor. So I might just put like a, a leg that you can wind down and then wind back up out of the way. A bit like a jockey wheel, but a leg rather than a wheel. Um, but yeah, I'll have a quick look at this. So this is the piece I welded on yesterday. Welded it up on the inside of there, underneath, across the back, across the back in there, up either side. It was just bending up a little bit. So I've stood that bit on end, I've ground it down so it'll, it's a nice tight fit in there. I shall weld along there, weld along there, and get some in at the back as well. And that should strengthen that up quite nice. As I said, it's a bit Heath Robinson, but it'll do the job. <laughs> And say so, once this garage is done, which you know it's getting it's getting close. The next job we've got is get on the digger and scrape out the dirt. But uh, I'll get this welded up now. Just waiting for Tim to get the extension leads from the house. So we've got the stick welder out. It's a Rockworth AR100 Arc MMA welder. What's that? 100 amp or something? I don't know. Anyway, it works. It does the job. So let's uh, see what we can do here. Make a mess. Rate my weld. <laughs> it's all right, it does the job. But the thing is broke on that. So I have to switch it off, wick it out with a screwdriver, put a new one in. I did this yesterday without switching it off and I was getting tingles. So something that's not right somewhere. Anyway, let's do another bit along here. I think we've got a good flow in there. <laughs> I don't think it's going anywhere, but I'll do some on the other side and I'll try and get some up the middle and maybe some up the, in the top. I won't bring you along for that because you'll soon get bored and it might hurt your little eyes. So we're all welded up. I'll just show you my efforts. Now it takes a very brave man to show his welding on YouTube. <laughs> but it's done the job. It's not the prettiest. Uh, I'm working with some dud machinery the MIG welder we can't find the earth clamp for it so we're using this old little arc welder which does the job 
we'll, that's, we'll leave it at that, it does the job. So we've done this, I've welded this on here to stop this moving about. I am at some point going to need to weld this part to the flower mower because that's all wobbly and it's elongated holes up there. But for now, I just want to get it hooked on the tractor, adjust the, uh, the draw bar up and down so we get the flower mower sitting at the right level. Uh, so the engine's sitting level and the skids on the front are sort of pointing upwards. At the moment, they're sort of down, digging into the ground. So we can get that adjusted and once that's adjusted, I'm going to weld up the thread on this bar here. I know it's a lot of you out there are probably screaming, no, don't do it, don't do it. But we're only ever going to tote with the tractor. Um, we don't need it adjustable. We've taken the wheels off. We don't need to raise the height at the back. We can move the roller at the back if we need to. But for our purposes, it's going to be fine. I'm not saying everybody should go out and do this to their flower mower. But if over on the Ben's Garage channel, I did some reviews on this mower. And it is the biggest pile of crap going. It really is. But hopefully with all the improvements we're doing to it, we'll make it somewhat usable for years to come. We keep our fingers crossed. So I'll just quickly show you this. Big old blubber weld on there, look. So that's it, next job, get the tractor reversed up. Get this on, get it adjusted up. And then we'll go and cut some grass. We're all done. Hooked on the tractor. I've lifted it up. There you can see this. So the skids are off, up off the floor. Before, these were sort of like down and digging into the ground. So it, it is clear of the floor. I can get my fingers underneath. So what I've done, I've adjusted it on that bar in there and I've welded that bar up. And you can see that. Yet again, not the best welding, but uh, we're working with the tools we've got. <laughs> but it'll hold, so that's the good thing. So now I'm going to uh, get on the tractor and we'll take it for a little spin, see what it uh, if it's going to tackle this long grass. This engine seems to be more powerful than the last engine, although they're both rated at 13 horsepower. Uh, it didn't bog down. It bogged down a little bit over there where there's a lot of nettles and stuff. And it sort of really clogged up, but and I could just hear it slowing down a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, and I did smell the belts a little bit when it did that as well. So whether it was just a bit too much for it, but now we've got the flap open. This long grass, it's it's first, well, it should be first cut hay really, but we're not into growing hay because um, we haven't got animals and we're not likely to have any animals. Anyway, so this isn't like really thick grass. It's just first, it's all flowered. The, you know, all the flowers are finished in the in the meadow grass and that. But there is still a lot of bugs and stuff. So we're just going to cut up here for now, uh, and I'll probably cut a path down through there so we can. There's a trench over there where we planted some overstock vegetables and a lot of wild flowers. So I'll cut up there and we can have a look at that as well. Right, get tidied up and get on the tractor. Don't know if you hear me, tractor's running, mower's running. Oh yeah. We're gonna rev it up and see how it cuts through the long grass. Yeah, I hope you can hear me over all this row. Tina's just getting my ear defenders because it's a little bit noisy. She's gonna rev it up for us and then uh, We'll cut some grass.
Looks like we might be in for a bit of rain. Uh, it was forecast 10% chance of rain today. Anyway, I've got all up that up there done, and I've done a path down that way where Tina walks the dogs. So far, it has held up. Um, the anti-vibration things on the tank have disintegrated, so I'm going to have to look at uh, getting something for those. I'm not sure what, but uh, there is a lot of vibration on this mower. Whether it's because there's a couple of flails missing, it's put it out of balance. Uh, we've obviously got to look into getting some different flails. But I um, just want to make sure it's going to work first before we start spending any more money on it. But it didn't drop down, I don't think, on the front, so that weld's held up. The towing hitch down there, that's all held up. Um, yeah, obviously the grass is quite long. I mean, it was coming up over the bonnet of the tractor, so well over a metre in places. Uh, it, you know, it's probably asking a bit too much for it, really, but it does the job. And it's got this long because we've not been able to cut it. We, you know, the, the plan is to let the flower, the wild flowers grow, and then chop it down and let it grow again. But uh, fun on the farm. Let's have a quick look in the polytunnel because, as Tina informs me, we've got some chilies growing. So we're in the polytunnel, and things are starting to kick off. The plants haven't got as big as I'd hoped they would before they started flowering, um, but. It, if you keep picking them, hopefully they'll keep keep producing. With the auto pot system, we've started to add feed to that now. We, it's had a good couple of fills up with just plain water, um, and now we're going to start using the chili focus. So that's in there now, and the, the chilies that are in the other pots are they're being fed with chili focus as well. But uh, look down here. I don't know if you can see this. That's a chocolate butt. We'll go to the plant next door because there's some starting to grow on there. Yeah. You see, they're all flowering, but they've all got new growth as well, so <laughs> they will double in size quite quick. Now, especially now we're feeding them. That's Carolina Reaper. Uh, there's some on this one here. I don't know what that is. Hang on. That's, that is a Moraga scorpion. OMG. That one's a Moraga scorpion. Oh, apparently they're Moraga, not Moragas. So on this Moraga scorpion, oh, breaks. On this Moraga scorpion down here. That's the one I saw first. We have a chilli coming. Uh, we've not had those ones before, so that might be hot. We've got a scorpion, just a plain scorpion in from there. Uh, yeah, Trinidad scorpion. Oh, there are some starting. They're only tiny, tiny, but... It's around the back. That's our Trinidad scorpion, and we've got Maruga scorpions, chocolate butt or chocolate butlar, I think they call them, Carolina Reapers. So they're all super hots. The other ones, we, are these the jalapenos? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, down here in the bigger pots, we've got just jalapenos. And the little ones, the little ones we're going to put in the ground outside and uh, see how well they do. But I mean, even these ones are starting to flower in the pots. I need to get these ones out soon, they're starting to uh, Yeah. Well, next job. So it looks like we're going to be alright for chilies this year. I'm not sure about carrots, but... <laughs> so that's it for this video, just a little bit of a vlog. Brief insight of to what we've been doing over the weekend and stuff. I've started to cut the grass. Uh, I've got to just look at doing something on the anti-vibration things on the fuel tank. I shouldn't really have to, it's a brand new engine, but obviously, yeah, them. yeah, but then they'll just say, well, the machine that you've put it on vibrates too much, which it does, mm. 
Um, it does, there's a big sticker on the back that says if it vibrates, switch it off. It's always vibrated. Yeah, not as much as it does now. So, yeah, I hope you like this video. Please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and from me and The Hobbit, it's bye for now.